A mighty fortress is our God, a bulwark never failing. Welcome to another Start the Week video, a short devotional thought to help you start this incoming week. And over the last number of weeks, we've been looking at Ephesians chapter 6 and we've been thinking about the armour of God. How whenever we come to faith in Christ, we are in constant conflict with Satan himself. That there is a spiritual battle and that we need to be properly equipped and properly prepared for that battle. We need to understand that God has given us all of the resources that we need. And yet we have to personally put on the whole armour of God. That's what we're told to do. As we think about this this morning, we're going to read from the book of Ephesians chapter 6. It's important to remember that the Apostle Paul wrote this letter to real people in a real place, in a place called Ephesus during the first century. And so let's hear God's word from Ephesians 6 verse 10. We're going to read down to verse 17 and then we're going to be thinking about this morning the helmet of salvation that we need to wear. Finally, be strong in the Lord and in the strength of his might. Put on the whole armour of God that you may be able to stand against the schemes of the devil. For we do not wrestle against flesh and blood, but against the rulers, against the authorities, against the cosmic powers over this present darkness, against the spiritual forces of evil in the heavenly places. Therefore, take up the whole armour of God that you may be able to withstand in the evil day and having done all to stand firm. Stand therefore, having fastened on the belt of truth and having put on the breastplate of righteousness and as shoes for your feet, having put on the readiness given by the gospel of peace. In all circumstances, take up the shield of faith with which you can extinguish all the flaming darts of the evil one and take the helmet of salvation and the sword of the spirit which is the word of God. I want to think this morning about the helmet of salvation. We're told what the sword of the spirit is that's the word of God. We're not told what the helmet of salvation is but we do know that a soldier in that period would have worn these pieces of armour. And a soldier needed to be protected from head to foot. And so we've already looked at the shoes and the breastplate of righteousness. And we're thinking now about this helmet that the soldier would put on before he would go out into battle. So what did the Apostle Paul mean when he wrote to these people? And what does he mean by saying we need to put on verse 17 or take the helmet of salvation? What does that actually mean? Well, there's no doubt as we think about the character of our enemy, Satan seeks to divide. We see that in Genesis chapter 3 at the fall of man. He also seeks to deceive, to discourage, to destroy, to cast doubt. And very often Satan casts doubt into our hearts and into our minds. And that doubt can very often lead to deep and desperate discouragement. So to take the helmet of salvation is to understand where we stand spiritually in our relationship with God. It's to have a complete assurance that the salvation that we have in Christ Jesus is absolutely secure and certain through Christ Jesus. So whenever we talk about this helmet of salvation, we need to remember that soldiers in that period would have worn a bronze helmet covered with leather. And of course, that helmet was purely for the, their personal protection, because I'm sure you realize that you've noticed that sometimes people suffer concussion. And a friend of mine was playing football and he had a knock on the head. He suffered concussion and subsequently he injured his leg quite badly later on in the game because he wasn't quite sure of what he was actually doing. He'd lost his whole sense of coordination. He was disorientated and he eventually had to come off the pitch. 
And so the Apostle Paul wants us to understand that we can be sure of salvation. God has promised those who believe in Jesus Christ that they will be saved from the penalty and punishment of sin, which is eternal hell. And they will ultimately be saved from the very presence of sin because they will reach eternal heaven where they will spend eternity with the Lord Jesus Christ. Now, if we have doubts as to whether or not our salvation is real, that can be a cause of discouragement and despondency. And so it's really important that we understand what God has said about our salvation and that we have an absolute assurance that we are saved from the penalty and punishment of sin. We are actually saved also from the power of sin because although we still sin, sin no longer totally dominates and drives our lives. And ultimately, we will be saved from the presence of sin. How do we know that that's possible? Because of what the Bible says. One of the most popular verses in the Bible is John's Gospel, chapter 3, verse 16. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son, that whoever believes in him should not perish, but have everlasting life, eternal life, which comes through the Lord Jesus Christ. Jesus said, my sheep hear my voice and I know them and I give unto them eternal life and they shall never perish. These are wonderful words of assurance. And so the helmet of salvation is the assurance this morning that as you start a new day and that as you start a new week, that if you have trusted in Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior, if you've repented and turned away from your sin and you're following Christ, then you have this absolute assurance that you belong to him and nothing can separate you from God's love. And nothing can sever the relationship that you have with God through faith in the Lord Jesus Christ. May the Lord bless you today and this incoming week. Our helper, he amid the flood of mortal ills prevail.